hello everyone and welcome to today's video and to my home so today i have a really fun intricate video because this is going to summarize the past few months of work that we have put into this accent wall so when we first moved into our eclectic little home we were greeted into this beautiful focal room with this lime green plywood wall and it was atrocious the plywood was warped and it looked really bad so that meant undertaking the task of removing this plywood and putting up our own drywall now I'm not an expert with these things it was my first time doing this but I you know contractors are expensive <laughs> and I like doing things myself so we took on the task of doing it taking down the plywood was a complete nightmare it was it required us literally sawing it out of out of its place it was not easy at all. Once we finally got it all off, we noticed that the structure of the home, it's very, our home is very weird. I'll link our little house tour here so you can take a look at it. We were going to put the drywall back on. We noticed that the beams like were actually like not even straight. They weren't balanced with each other. So there was a lot of like curvature in the wall naturally, which obviously led to probably a lot of the warping with the plywood. On top of that, so many of the panels were incredibly overstuffed with insulation, which also led to more warping. So all of that was a lot of fixing that we had to do. But all in all, we got it up. We got the mud and all that kind of stuff going. But it wasn't perfect because again the wall is basically wavy so there's only so much you could do with that my vision all along for this wall was to do a really awesome gallery wall featuring a dark wall and then some paneling and that worked really well to be able to make it look as seamless as possible and that's where we're going to start today with after it's been painted we are going to put some nice crown molding at the top and some paneling so that we can kind of bring to life a little bit this space originally i want to do three boxes for the paneling and kind of create this cool kind of effect but again with our house being weird we have a wood stove that doesn't happen to be lined up perfectly halfway through the wall and so that kind of threw that off balance so instead i wanted to do a little bit of a perimeter so i had to start off with measuring the crown molding and then kind of sawing it to cut it to size we have these little beams so i have to cut out these little notches in order to adhere everything i use a little bit of liquid nails and actual nails so i don't have a nail gun nail guns are expensive and I decided just to get these tiny little nails and hammer them in myself. So after that is up, it's time to do more of the fine paneling. So I just picked up these pieces of paneling that's like, I don't know, like an inch wide. It's very light. And again, I do the kind of similar method. I have this really nifty little contraption where I can cut perfect 90 degree angles. So it looks really professional and good. After I had everything up on the wall, I went back in with a screwdriver to kind of make sure that all the nails were flush. Again, this is very like DIY bare bones. I'm not an expert with this stuff, but I also know that it's fun to do things yourself. And when you don't have a ginormous bad budget to have a bunch of stuff done for you, you gotta make use of what you have. So if you're thinking about doing something simpler, maybe you find a little bit of inspiration here. The next step is essentially to paint everything. So I got some more paint that we used on the wall and hand painted all of this and this definitely took me a while because I, I will have to say as much as I love the color I wanted it to be black but not a black that was like super dark and something that had a little bit of warmth in some ways so it's kind of a little purpley it's a beautiful color I'm absolutely obsessed with it but the paint quality was not my favorite and required quite a few coats in order to be completely solid moving on to our next project which is a very small revamp of this mantle I was out antiquing thrifting the other day and I wasn't looking for anything in particular but I came across this beautiful mantle and I was like oh my gosh this would actually look really cool to kind of again add another layer of dimension for our wall so we have a wood stove so obviously it, the wood stove isn't inside the mantle and maybe to some it will look weird but I think it adds a lot of a, a homey touch and I think it'd be really fun maybe down the road to maybe try to do some other kind of cool detailing with it but for now, I just wanted to paint it the same color as the wall. So obviously the first thing I have to do is clean it, make sure everything is clean so that the paint goes on as beautifully as possible. It is an older mantle, so I want to take a lot of care with it. For some of the very fine details, I had to go in with a finer brush in order to get into all the little nooks and crannies. And obviously, like the paneling, I had to do two coats of this paint as well. 
But this is how it looks in the end, and honestly, I'm, I'm so obsessed with how it looks. Okay, now that we have the wall up, painted, the paneling done, and the mantle all painted, it's time to get to the fun part, which is creating our maximalist gallery wall. So essentially my vision for this wall, I wanted it to feel like I was walking through a haunted medieval castle. <laughs> I wanted to have really kind of old things and I wanted to very intentionally collect the items. I love antiques and I wanted everything on the wall to be old and used in some way. So I had been scouring antique stores, thrift stores, eBay, Facebook marketplace, the works to try to find the perfect items to lend to this vision and to also create a lot of dimension. I didn't want to have just mirrors and picture frames. I wanted to use the space almost like, um, you know, a collection of various beautiful items that were made throughout different times in history. So to start stuff off, I just decided I want to work everything on the floor. I know everyone has, or a lot of people have a very methodical way of creating gallery walls where they, you know, measure every little thing and create guidelines with pieces of paper and all that kind of stuff. And I think that's wonderful, but I think I'm a lot more intuitive and free flowing with my approach. And so I just want to map everything out on my floor and kind of play around with it there first. So trying to basically evened out the metal tones. I definitely wanted to go for mixed metals. I'm not like super into, oh, it has to be just gold or just silver. I wanted to mix things. So I want to make sure there's even balance, even balance of frames and mirrors, and then also an even balance of my other miscellaneous accessories. The biggest item on this part of the wall is going to be this beautiful ornate mirror that I got in an antique store in Connecticut. And I basically use that as like the center point so I can kind of build around that. So for this part, I do want obviously everything to be very straight. I don't really care so much in relation to the other pieces as long as I have a general idea that I already mapped out. But the one thing that I had to be careful of is heavy pieces, making sure that they were on the studs. I do have quite a few, like the mirror, um, this, I don't know what this is called. This shelf thing is incredibly heavy too. So I wanted to make sure they were all on studs. And thankfully, because I had just done the whole process of putting up the walls, I had with pencil where all the studs were. So that kind of helped give me guidelines. So I knew exactly where they were. I didn't have to go use the stun finder, but obviously you can use one of those if you need to. I had multiple sizes of nails. Some that are a little bit bigger, some that are a little bit smaller, depending on the pieces. And then I had some kind of command strip tape that held up to 15 pounds that I had to use on most things, even the picture frames, because a lot of them were just meant to be, you know, on your countertop. After I really started with putting a couple things up, I was starting to kind of forget exactly where I wanted things to be. So I ended up kind of taking a picture of my floor to make sure that I could remember exactly where everything was. And actually it was very helpful. I ended up referencing it. So I kind of knew with the things up on the wall where I wanted the new pieces to be relative to that. So while you watch me hang this all up, I'll try to think of some little tips that I kind of found when I was putting these things together. So I wanted to pick up some really beautiful ornate pieces, but I did definitely need a lot of like filler frames to kind of just make the entire space look more full essentially. So I actually found if you go to Facebook Marketplace and other kind of places like that, a lot of people are kind of giving away sets of frames. A lot of them are people who had weddings and they used them as, um, you know, table numbers and such. And they give away, like I had 14 frames that I bought for like 20 bucks with a little bit extra for shipping, which I think is actually a really, really good deal. And that way you don't have to hunt for all these tiny little individual pieces if you're a little impatient like I am you can just, you know, get some filler frames in bulk. Now for a lot of the artwork that I actually have inside came from miscellaneous places and it actually all was very cheap. So a lot of the things that I got, um, I sometimes bought them from online stores who had, you know, created their own prints. Some of them were just shops off of Etsy that had very popular prints that are just, I think, in the public domain and you can buy them for like two bucks. And then I just went to Staples or Walgreens and I printed them off, which again, cost just a little bit. It's not too bad. Staples is cheaper, but they don't have as many uh, variance options with sizes and the quality definitely is I think better with like Walgreens so that's what I did for some of those. Some other of my favorite pieces actually came from small businesses, small shops. Maybe my favorite piece in the entire wall is this absolutely stunning taxidermied butterfly. It is ethically sourced and I just think it's it's insane. I wish I can get a better picture video of it because 
when you look at it really close it looks black from afar but there are these tiny little green speckles all over it and it almost looks like glitter and it's just insane that that just naturally happens some other pieces that are some of my favorites that i got were actually these two prints of this crow and this cat so i found this artist actually on tiktok i'll leave his information down below so now I have a little bit of a tricky situation with hanging this one piece on the wall. So this is a sconce that I purchased off of eBay and it is, I keep on saying these are all like one of my favorite things, but again, this is kind of my, the whole point of doing this wall is I want to have really, really cool items. Um, so I found this sconce on eBay and it is from the 1800s, which is just insane to me um, and I got a good deal on it because it is broken so I'm gonna have to think about long term what to do but I definitely do not want it to miss out on being on the wall so it is kind of snapped and so my plan was actually to hang these little nails because there's a lot of like holes in it and kind of make sure that they're kind of perfectly flush with the top piece so that you can't tell that it's cracked unfortunately the actual sconce piece where the little candles go I have no idea how I'm gonna put that on it's incredibly heavy and because it is such an old piece I want to be very um, careful with not being too experimental to do it properly so that I do not damage this beautiful little treasure now that I have both sides of the wall done it's time for like the not really the main attraction but the centerpiece of all of this which is this beautiful clock that I got off of Facebook marketplace so this clock is actually from the 70s, which I thought was kind of cool because this house is from the 70s and it is, it's is—it's just fun and so over the top, which I absolutely love. It came with these beautiful chains and these extra sconces. And so it just has this, again, over the top beautifulness to it. So the last finishing touch is to add all the candlesticks and that concludes my gallery wall. And honestly, I feel like I can't stop staring at it. It is better than I had thought it would have all turn out in my head, especially when I think back to that god awful plywood lime green wall. I think it perfectly encapsulates my style and taste i hope you really enjoyed this video and if you did definitely go and hit the subscribe button if you feel so inclined i have an epic amount of content ideas and projects that i want to do for around the home things that are definitely not compromising on looks but are very diy thrifting budget friendly stuff so if you're kind of into that and just into creative stuff in general definitely hit the subscribe like this video if you enjoyed it and i will catch you all in my next video so i'll see you then bye